Let's consider the force exerted on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. So here is the magnetic poles. So we have north and south. So the main flux is going to go north to south. And this is a conductor. We're going to pass a current into that conductor. And doing so will produce a magnetic field. So it will be a magnetic field going around the conductor as previously discussed. And what's going to happen now is this field and the fixed field from the, uh, the poles of the magnet will produce a force which will push this conductor out of the magnetic field. So what is going to happen is the flux from here will travel along. It's going to go up and down. So it's going that way. Same all the way along. OK, so the net effect of this flux going over the top of the conductor is that it will be pushed down. There will be a force exerted on that conductor. And we need this in the motor. If we didn't have this particular principle, a motor would not turn. So let's look at the factors which are involved. First of all, between the two poles of the magnet, there is a particular strength of flux. So that is the flux density. So B is involved. The second thing is the size of the current. The greater the current, the greater this particular flux, and therefore the greater the force that it will be pushed down with. And the third factor is what is the length of the conductor in the magnetic field? So if this piece of conductor, this piece of wire was 10 meters long, but only one meter of it were fell within this uh, pole area, then it's the one meter that we would use. So it is this length. So it's that length that we need to know. Let's do a very quick example. So the formula, force on a conductor is B I L. Force equals Bill. Good formula to remember. Let's put some numbers in. Supposing I say that the flux density is 0.25 Tesla. And we have a current of, say, 8 amps. And let's suppose the length of the conductor within the field is three meters. Then you literally multiply them together. F equals BIL, so the flux density 0.25. The current times eight times the length, which was three. And that comes to six newtons. Okay, very simple. Quite common to need to transpose this. And uh, if I just flip over, that'll do. So if we take F equals B I L, force equals Bill, you can transpose traditionally if you want to do the crisscross method, if you want to define the current then leave the current there, move B and L underneath. So you get the idea for that. But this, surprisingly, will go in a triangle. It looks unusual. F equals Bill. So if you're a triangle person, then cover up the one that you want. If you want to find the current, which was the example I said just there, cover up I, I, equals and you've got f on top and b and l underneath so f on top b and l underneath so i'll leave that with you carry on with your handout <laughs>